2024 is starting to look like an absolutely amazing year for MMO players. From what we know so far, there are well over 10 MMOs releasing this year, with all of them being different and unique ways while still keeping classical MMO experiences in each one. One massive issue MMOs are facing right now, though, is some game devs are not releasing the product that they promised and borderline scamming their players. In today's video, I'll be talking about five MMOs I believe have insane potential and are worth at least checking out. Chrono Odyssey is an up-and-coming MMO being made by Inpixel and Gameplex that looks insanely good. The game itself is being made in Unreal Engine 5 for Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. In the game, the player will be able to choose between six different classes, including Swordsman, Paladin, Sorcerer, Berserker, Assassin, and Ranger that are not gender locked. Swordsman will be able to use swords and shields while switching to great swords, allowing Swordsmen to tank tons of damage and do massive AoE damage. Paladins can use maces and tower shields while switching to a spear. We haven't got much gameplay on them, but if I had to assume, the Paladin might be the main tank, especially if they're able to heal themselves. Sorcerers are your typical mage in any game using a staff and spellbook, allowing sorcerers to dash around while casting massive AoE spells, making them a typical glass cannon. Zerkers will dual axes and a great axe, allowing players to do a massive amount of explosive melee damage all at once. There's really nothing crazy about the Berserkers, they're just dual classes. Assassins will be able to use dual daggers and a rifle. From what we've seen so far, it will primarily do single target tick damage with the ability to do some AoE damage with its daggers, but it will probably get one shot by most enemies because of the lack of armor that it has. Rangers are able to use a bow and a rapier. The class itself looks to be very fast paced using a mixture of AoE and single target attacks in both of its weapons. One thing I'd love to see in the ranger is the ability to trap and snare enemies to debuff them. Overall, I love Chrono Odyssey as it gives a massive Dark Souls vibe in not only its art style but in its gameplay as well. I can't wait to see what's to come from Chrono Odyssey and I hope that the devs do a massive dev update soon so maybe we get a first look at character creation or maybe a little bit more lore into the world. Into the Echo is a fantasy time-traveling MMORPG. From what we know so far, the player will be able to travel through time using Echoes, although after that, it's mainly just speculation throughout the community. If it was me designing this though, I'd love to make it where Echoes are a mixture of dungeons, raids, and events while adding them to the main story missions to help players get used to the mechanics. In fact, one of the game's main selling points is the devs want to create something extremely unique for MMORPGs with newer technologies. That's why I believe a mechanic that allows players to warp the world further by time-traveling would be insanely unique. One thing I do love so far is how similar the art style is to a game like Entrouded, a survival sandbox game that I personally believe is a high 9 out of 10. Although from the short trailer we have on Into the Echo, I hope they allow us to change the camera angle because I personally hate over the shoulder camera angles, I just think they're really lazy. Something that they could really implement into this game though is AI dungeon generation, making it where every single dungeon has thousands and thousands of different unique scenarios that could happen within the dungeon. So dungeons are more about going through and actually having fun and exploring exploring dungeons for better loot instead of just grinding the same dungeon over and over and over again to get one item. Overall, I think Into the Echo looks absolutely amazing and I hope to see more updates coming into the future. Legend of Ymir is a NFT MMORPG set in Norse mythology that looks fairly good, but I do have some concerns about the game. In the game, players will make different characters with Norse traits and unique powers, although devs haven't shown how character creation is. If I was the devs, I would try to add more core races from Norse mythology such as humans, dwarves, and maybe some more, making it where character creation would be fairly unique with tons of races, especially with the small look we already received that looks very similar to Black Desert Online's character creation. On top of this character creation, we got to see two different types of combat. Firstly, we have a preset combat that allows players to press a button at a precise time. I'd assume this is basically just for like story missions because in real combat, that wouldn't make sense whatsoever. Then we have action combat allowing players to flow between their skills similar to BDO. One thing I really dislike about these combat styles is one makes the player feel super OP, where the other makes the player feel like they're just trying to fight a tank with their bare hands. So let's hope this gets balanced a little more. How about this, the NFT part really confuses me. I really don't understand how players will earn or gain NFTs from playing this game, unless they're going to make bosses and NPCs drop gear and NFTs. Although this could have just been the original thought, and they could have changed it. I really love the concept of Legend of Ymir, especially because it's Norse mythology, but I wish the devs would show off real gameplay instead of random cinematic gameplay to make the game look better, because right now the game really looks like Black Desert Online just set in a more Norse environment, and I'm not a really big fan of that. Project LL is a brand new sci-fi MMORPG that looks better than most that I've seen in a very long time. Now, with the game, we haven't seen any crazy game loops or customization yet, but all we've seen is amazing third-person combat, gear customization, graphics, exploration, and unique builds. On top of this, we've seen players be able to control different mechs for battle.
that's insanely similar to Titanfall. While looking at all these different mechanics, it feels as if the devs saw the divisions, combat, Destiny's movement and design, and Titanfall's robots, then put them all into a game. Though I'd say they've even taken those game mechanics to the next level, allowing the game to look insanely unique compared to others. If this game is truly the way they show in the trailer, where the world is super full of things to explore, the player can get into massive battles inside and outside of buildings with many different weapons, armor, and abilities, while being able to play with friends and get loot, then this game could completely take over the sci-fi MMORPG genre. One thing I really love to see is a short video on overall character customization and skins that you're going to be able to grind for, so that way you know that it's not just a endless loot grind like other games that we've played in the past. Overall, with what we've seen so far, there really isn't anything to complain about with this game. Mainly, we're just trying to figure out what all is in the game. In their trailer, though, it does look like this is a part of some sort of alien apocalypse, which I think is really cool, and it's a little nasty, too. Dark Age 2. A brand new fantasy MMORPG that seems to have a seamless world and is the follow-up game to Arc Age. The game itself is being made in Unreal Engine 5 with fantastic graphics, four more classes, and multiple races to choose from. The classes we know so far are the knight using a sword and shield with a speculation to use magic, mages using a staff allowing them to cast offensive and defensive spells, warriors are able to use swords and shields with axes and heavy weapons, highly rangers will be able to use bows and arrows. There's also a really high chance there will be more classes added into the future as well, but these are are the main confirmed ones right now. There's also multiple races right now, such as humans and elves, but many believe they'll be adding dwarves, forgive my pronunciation, Noyans, Farans, Harani, and Warborn, allowing players to have tons of unique builds and designs for characters. Something I'd love to see is them make every race have their own unique quest line, similar to Guild Wars 2, giving players a much deeper lore into each individual race and class. From what we've seen so far, the game looks fantastic, and I can't wait to try it out. Although anytime something is a sequel, it does bring some concern, because that sometimes means that game does have gotten lazy. So I'm really hoping this game is extremely different from the first one to help bring some new aspects to the MMO world instead of just copy and paste content. Overall, all these MMOs look insanely good and have tons of potential to come out in this year. Obviously, they do take a lot of aspects from older games, but I believe that is a really good thing as a lot of players will not play newer games if they don't have old aspects in newer games. But all of the MMOs are also very unique in their own way, especially Project L Love with its Titanfall-like mechanics. Titanic I personally really enjoyed and was very disappointed Titanfall failed to continue to deliver. Liver. On this list, I'm really looking forward to Chrono Odyssey as the game seems to check all the boxes for me. Not only is it fantasy, it has the Dark Souls vibe with combat and in its art style, but also in the class system as well. Especially if we get some crazy character customization, cutscenes, and some unique story to go along with the game. Let me know in the comments below what game you're looking forward to this year. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, and have a wonderful day.